Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and welcome back to What the Funk. In this episode, I'll show you how to supercharge your ERC20 tokens and instantly give them more utility. So in a previous series, I talked over how to create an ERC20 based Ethereum token. And if you remember from that series, an ERC20 token is just a token that is based on a agreed upon set of standards that pretty much every single token based on Ethereum uh, follows. This allows every token uh, to be used in different wallets um, pretty easily, as well as on different exchanges. But the problem with the original ERC-20 token standard is that if you're going to use your tokens for, for some sort of utility inside of a decentralized application, so within other smart contracts on the network, it's a lot more difficult to actually accept tokens and then do something with those tokens because what you end up having to do is have users send the tokens and in order to detect that you've been sent those tokens you either need to have some other sort of application listening on the blockchain to see that those tokens were accepted or if you're doing an entirely decentralized application you have to actually have two different steps to make sure you're getting the right amount of tokens in your smart contract to do what you need to do so you would have the user uh, run the approve method on the erc20 contract and then on the other smart contract that you want to use those tokens you would go ahead and have them execute another method which would call transfer from on the erc20 contract from that contract so it's actually two steps and you're actually making users uh, approve two different transactions which isn't very user friendly and it kind of um, confuses people sometimes so the ERC-827 token standard is just an extension to ERC-20. It's not an entirely new standard. It's just adding uh, three separate methods to the ERC-20 token standard and allowing the actual token contract itself to be able to uh, send calls to external contracts. So down here, um, basically what it does is takes the approve, transfer, and transfer from functions in the original ERC-20 token standard and uh, overrides them. And what method overriding or function overriding is, is basically taking a function, creating another function of the same name, but uh, changing the way it's called. So adding more parameters or subtracting parameters. So you can have two functions of the same name, but they just have a different signature. So uh, in this case, the approved transfer and transfer from functions will actually add an additional data parameter. And all that data parameter is, is a bytes 32 uh, encoded parameter, which is essentially just the method you want to call on the contract you're actually sending tokens to. So if we take a look down here to ERC-827 methods, it's basically describing exactly how these methods should look. And if you take a look at this transfer method, so just like ERC-20, we take a two uh, parameter, which is the address of who you're sending those tokens to, a UINT-256 uh, for the value, so the number of tokens you want to send, but then you have this additional parameter, which is bytes, and it's data. So it's just bytes encoded, basically name of the method that you want to call on an external function. So let's take a look at what this does. So we've got some guards over here. So first we're going to require that we're not sending tokens to um, the actual ERC-20 token contract. Uh, we don't want to do that because then your tokens just get lost and then don't do anything. And then we're going to actually call the original transfer method. So the original transfer method is going to take only two arguments. So we're going to call that one, send the tokens to it, and then yes, yeah, send it to the address that we want, and then send the number of tokens. And then we're gonna make sure that passes before we can continue on to the next one. And this next piece is to take the address, which should be a contract, um, and then call the method that's bytes32 encoded, and then just run that function. So if that passes, then we go ahead and return true, and then everything's hunky-dory. We do the same for transfer from and 
approve. So really, because we've added this extra data parameter, being able to call a function on a separate contract, we we'll really only need one of these methods. But just for completeness sake, they've added all three of these methods. The only one we actually will need, um, if you want to just do a single transaction to call a, uh, a method after receiving tokens, is this approve um, method. But we're just going to go ahead and copy all of these and add it to an existing ERC-20 contract. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got a small little truffle project um, created here with a couple of contracts. So I've got a Funk token, which is just a ERC-20 token. Um, it inherits from Standard token, which is part of the Open Zeppelin or Zeppelin Solidity um, library. And if you're creating your own tokens, I highly recommend you just basically use this library and then just copy and paste because the uh, the, the contracts created by Open Solidity have been out. Um, they're publicly vetted by the open source community and they're basically, they've already been audited and they're pretty secure. So instead of inventing, reinventing the wheel, just go ahead and use the open or the Zeppelin Solidity from Open Zeppelin um, contract library. So that's all I've did. done. Imported the standard token um, and then made the modifications to suit my needs. So I've got funk token, simple as funk, 18 decimals, and then I've only created 10,000 tokens. And then I've got a constructor that basically uh, sets the total supply um, and then gives me the one deploying this contract, all of those tokens, and then launching that transfer event. So it would actually show up in Etherscan if you actually deployed that. So that's all I've got. And then I've created this test contract, which all it has is a, a counter and then a function to increase the count. Um, so what I want to do is send some tokens to this contract and then increase the count as I send them tokens. So nothing really fancy. I'm just showing that you that you can call another contract from um, these normal transfer approve and transfer from functions. So let's go ahead and just paste these in real quick. All right, we've got these all copied and you can see that they all pretty much do the exact same thing. They act as sort of a proxy to the original functions of the same name with the only thing changing is that they actually call an external function on another contract. Now, uh, to demonstrate that this actually works, we're just going to write a quick test in JavaScript. And Truffle allows you to write tests. It's got the, the, uh, a framework already set up. So I've created a, an empty test here. Um, I've imported my func token and then the test contract. Um, and then I've got this FJS ABI um, that I've included and I'll show you what I'm going to use it for later. So <clears throat> all we're going to do first is create a, a test case. And so in this case, we want it to it transfers tokens and calls a contract function. And we want this to be an asynchronous function. Um, we're using the uh, JavaScript ES6 um, syntax. So if you're not familiar with that, um, just Google it. Um, it's just a cleaner, nicer way to write JavaScript without all the crazy callbacks um, and normal tacky stuff that you would see in older versions of JavaScript. So what do we want to do? Well, first we want to uh, grab instances of our contracts. So let's do that now. Uh, let's get an instance of func token and just call it token. So 
So we're just going to get a brand new instance. It's going to deploy it and then just give us that instance back from the, the network. Uh, we use this await right here because this is an asynchronous call. And rather than do a, a callback with a then and then an anonymous function inside that and then just like have anonymous functions and callbacks all the way down, we can use this await uh, because we've made this function async. So all await does is say, wait till this is complete before going on to the next line. So we're going to do that the same thing for our test contract. So we've got those instances. And all we want to do is send some tokens to the test contract and call a function within that test contract. And we have a function called increase count. But this is a little bit tricky. Uh, Truffle automatically gives you the framework or does all the hard work to allow you to take an instance of your contract and then just call methods on that contract. Uh, so I could do something like token dot transfer. And that's going to call the transfer function on the token contract. But in this case, I have two versions of the transfer method. And this actually confuses Truffle um, and even Web3 and like other libraries that, um, that do this, this magic behind the scenes. So what needs to happen is I need to create a raw transaction and just send it um, bytes encoded data. So just send it straight up bytecode. So in order to do this, I need to get a representation of the method I need to call. So not the first transfer function, but the second new transfer function that has the third data argument. Um, and the way to do that is we copy a piece from the compiled version of this contract from the ABI. Um, and if you remember from the previous videos, all the ABI is is a JSON object representation of your smart contract. So I only copied the piece that has to deal with our new transfer function. And you can actually go ahead and look in Funk Token and if you want to go and find it, which we won't, just know that I looked through it and, and copied and pasted it um, and just saved it into this variable here. So ABI method. The next thing we're going to do is get a uh, bytes encoded representation of the function we're going to call on this test contract up here. So we're going to call this call data. And so we're going to set this equal to test. Um, and then there's this contract object that's included with this instance. Um, so it has a bunch of information about the different methods. So contract, and then the method we want to call um, is called, let me check real quick, increase count. It's called increase count, and then it has this get data method. And that's just going to return a bytes encoded uh, representation of that method call. So we've got that. And next, we're going to encode the entire call. So this transfer, um, who it's going to go to, how much, and then the actual method we're going to call. We're going to encode that into um, bytes. So that's what we have this FJS ABI library for. So we're going to call this transfer data. And it has this encode method function. So we've already got ABI method. So ABI method, remember that's the calling transfer on our token. 
uh, and then we're going to send it whatever arguments. So the first argument would be test, and we can get the actual deployed address of that contract using the dot address or property. We're just going to send 100 tokens to it, and we're going to send it the call data. And remember that is the method we want to call on the external this test contract right here. So that just gets encoded into bytes. And the next thing we can do is create a transaction. This is asynchronous, so we need to use the await. And so the token instance has this send transaction method. And we can just send it a raw transaction. Um, and it takes a couple of parameters. So the first one is from. Uh, Truffle gives you a list of test accounts, and it gives you this accounts variable for free. And we're going to use the first account, so index 0 in the array. And then the data is just going to be transfer data. So that's going to actually send the transaction. Finally, we want to check to make sure everything worked. So what do we need to check? First, we need to check that uh, there are actual tokens sent to the address of the test contract. And then second, we need to check that the counter was incremented um, on the contract. So if we remember, we look back at the contract, we set the counter at zero initially. So it should be zero when our test starts. And it should be one after we send this transaction. So the next thing we're going to do is get the balance for the test contract. And to do that, let's create a variable called balance, set it to equal uh, a call, whatever is returned from the call to balance of. So token dot balance of, and it should be test dot address. And we can just go ahead and console dot blog it. We're not actually writing a real unit test. We're actually just doing this to demonstrate that the uh, the tokens are working. So console.log, let's just log the balance. And then the next thing, we want to check the counter. So this is a public variable. So there should already be a public function created for free by Solidity. So we can just go ahead and create a variable for count and that is equal to test dot what was it counter yeah test dot counter and console dot log that oh and another thing these should be returned as big integers, JavaScript big integers, so they're not going to display correctly. So in order for them to display correctly, they come with this handy two number method. So we're going to do that for each. So that should work. So let's go over to our console. In our console, we can just type triple test. And voila, you can see that the balance of our test contract is now 100 and the counter has been incremented to 1. Now this is a simple example of how you can greatly improve the utility of your ERC20 tokens by including three extra functions. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you'd like to keep updated on when I post new content, 
hit subscribe and then make sure you hit that notification bell icon down below and that lets you know whenever I post something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.